Welcome back to the video blog. My name is Adam Daniel Mize, adamdanielmize.com or PMD for hire.com. Indie film promotion made easy. You know, I listen to a lot of podcasts and I cover a lot of videos. And I listened to one last night called Film Courage. And for those of you who are in the indie scene will know David Brainin and Karen Warden exceptionally well. They put together a podcast that pretty much brings into the circle all of the people that are in L.A. doing indie film, or people across the U.S., but mostly in California, that are doing really interesting indie projects. This last episode of theirs was their very first international guest, who, of course, was Chris Jones. Chris Jones of Living Spirit Pictures, who is the guy who also does the Guerrilla Filmmakers Pocketbook live stream show called The Production Office. And they brought Chris onto the show via Skype to talk about what he does, his backstory, some of his ongoing projects about the show, the production office, whatever. And as always, Chris Jones spoke really eloquently about his craft. He really spoke hesitation-free about all the things that mean something to him in moving pictures and his youth and his aspirations and his previous project. And basically, one of the questions that he had asked in return at the end of the podcast to both David and Karen was this, which I thought was really brilliant and which is something I'd like to answer right now on the video blog. He said, you know, with all the work that indie filmmakers today put into social media campaigns and into self-promotion and into marketing on the computer and to trying to garner audiences on their own and do their own distribution, should we really as indie filmmakers be focusing on scoring 5,000 audience sized viewers? Should we really focus on the small 5,000 ghettos, as he called them, groups of people to really get enthused about our film and to evangelize our projects? Or should we be thinking about films that try to score audiences of half a million, a million, four million people? really driving all of the emphasis and focus into the script and the story to try to ensure that those kind of audiences can be landed. So here's the response. For somebody like myself who spends a considerable amount of time in front of the machine and who generates most of his work from the kind of activities that I do online, I have a really interesting nuance on what Chris said. Chris speaks from the position of a filmmaker who has shot several short films in the past. His first film, The Runner, or White Angel, or Urban Ghost Story, covering a number of different genres that are sellable, having gone through him and his partners, Genevieve Jolif and Andrew Zinnis, having gone through the effort of trying to sell and distribute those films through traditional UK-based distributors, having gone to festivals, having received awards, having done, most recently, a Oscar-nominated, Oscar-nominated short called Gone Fishing. He speaks from that perspective, of a guy who has the capacity to land an audience of four million people. But for filmmakers that are just starting out, the kind of young creatives and other storytellers that Chris lectures to as part of his lecture series, or the kind of people that, let's say, David and Karen like to deal with, you know, trying to go right out of the starting gate to land a four million strong audience, that's a really tough job. You gotta start small. You gotta do the small things right. You really have to do the small things right. If you can't demonstrate your bona fides or your ability to convert a project with a really small audience, I personally believe you're not gonna be able to handle much larger budgets. If you can't handle a budget of $5,000, you're not going to be able to handle a budget of half a million dollars or even $5 million. You'll piss it all away like it's water. And that's what I think the crux of the social media stuff is. That's why I think social media is important. Having said that, it's a terribly time-consuming effort with very little instant feedback and not a lot of turnover. And it's a very low-impact uh, low margin kind of an activity, though it is necessary because the chance always exists that if the film is good, people will spread it around. I think the kind of social media marketing that Chris was referring to by that question 
was the kind of social media that exists today. It's a really competitive space. Everybody has Facebook fan pages. Everybody puts into play something that I call PMDing, Promotion of Marketing and Distribution 101. Everybody has a fan page, Twitter handle, website trailer. That's like a given. If you don't have that, you can't even hope to get any kind of an audience. So where's the edge in this social media thing? I think Chris should have asked the following question. Where is the edge in the social media marketing that allows people to break out of the 5,000 strong audience? And that's a question that we're grappling with as independent filmmakers today and something that we really don't have an answer to. And the guy that does come out or the woman that does come out with that particular strategy is really going to be able to try to get near that 4 million strong audience that Chris talks about. There is value in social media marketing. What kind of value remains to be seen? I do agree with Chris that it, it sometimes is a bit of a thankless job, but when it works, it works, and this whole discussion that I've said over the past few minutes is really moot. I wonder what Karen and David think about, or maybe there is no answer, but it's definitely something to think about because we have entered the sausage phase, the commoditization of social media marketing. We have really entered that stage of low impact purchase, fast moving consumer good. We really need that standout niche social media, I hate that word by the way, social media marketing campaign we really need to bust out. And maybe Chris and David and Karen through asking perver sorry, rhetorical questions are really going to come at the answer. So maybe I'll come up with something too in the next few days. Thank you again for listening and as always, I wish for you, from the streets of Europe, the very best of things. Take care. See you tomorrow.